Previously on the future of yachting now. So we're on the Sun Reef 80 Eco, first Eco sailing. We're in Dubai. You know, our clients were, were very satisfied with the efficiency of the cells and how much power they, they actually generated. The debut of the Sunreef Eco 80 at the much anticipated Dubai Boat Show was a resounding success. What day do you think they'll put the water in the tanks to test them? But if not tomorrow, then uh, Monday. Monday, okay. Innovation thrives in the fertile ground of shared vision, where collaboration takes root and determination blossoms into reality. We returned from Dubai refreshed and confident in our ambitions and booked our flight to Gdansk. We've been often asked, why build a yacht on the Baltic coast? Why Poland? People sometimes overlook Poland as a maritime giant. The Gdansk shipyard's prestige has its origins in medieval trade and became a maritime powerhouse in the golden age of sail. The Gdansk shipyard became a symbol of craftsmanship and innovation, attracting skilled shipbuilders and craftsmen from across Europe. During the Cold War, the Solidarity Trade Union emerged in August of 1980 at the Gdansk shipyard. The iconic image of Lech Walesa standing in the shipyard's gates became a powerful symbol of hope and resilience. The movement spread from Gdansk to all of Poland, leading to the collapse of the communist state. Today, Poland's shipbuilding industry has expanded rapidly, producing more than 25,000 boats in 2022. With 631 marinas and more than a thousand boating-related companies, Poland is now the second largest exporter of yachts in the world, bested only by the United States. Roughly 95% of yachts produced in Poland are exported, contributing to the $1.1 billion industry. The excellent craftsmanship and business-forward thinking of the once sleeping giant is supported by the government's Polish Investment and Trade Agency, as well as the Polish Chamber of Marine Industry and Water Sports. Together, these institutions help enable investors with legal support, tax-friendly policies, human capital, and financial incentives. In 2002, when founder and visionary Francis Lapp established Sunreef Yachts in the heart of the Gdansk shipyard, they set out on a mission to redefine the standards of luxury yachting, with a particular focus on catamarans. A bold move in an industry dominated by monohull designs. Sunreef Yachts quickly gained attention for its groundbreaking catamaran designs. The incorporation of solar power not only aligns with the growing environmental consciousness of our times, but also sets a new standard for sustainable luxury. Tonight, I'm in Gdansk, Poland. We were at the factory all day, completing a number of uh, design discussions. We started out with a tour of the factory. We are going into the production yard to see our Eco 80 being built. This is the paint shed. We saw this being built in the foundation just a few months ago. And this is big enough to paint a 100 foot sunroof. Right now we're walking to go have a look at the flybridge section. That molding's completed. <laughs> We've custom designed with sunreef and L-shaped bar that'll fit into this space. So coming up onto the flybridge, there'll be an ice maker, refrigerator, uh, some storage space, uh, trash area. These are the hard points for the helmsman's uh, seat. This is the hard point where the uh, steering and electronics will be and the throttles to, to drive the boat. And the bimini on this boat is the largest that Sun Reefs makes in the 80 class. So it'll go all the way from where that helm position is. And then we have a table here and a table here. These will go up and down and they'll be open in between with an insert that fits in between these, uh, these tables in case you have a large group when you're up here dining. But that's uh, gonna be a huge space to accommodate. Uh, guests be very nice. Poland shipyards provide us with the ultimate environment to create these masterpieces of the sea. But the process was not as easy as we had hoped. 
The war in Ukraine caused massive supply chain disruptions for many raw goods and labor, impacting us directly. Our team worked tirelessly to overcome these unforeseen challenges. Along with Sunreef Yachts, we needed to work quick on our feet to find solutions. The amount of transparency that, that we received from Sunreef was, was great, but those meetings evolved way beyond just simply having meetings with our project manager. We were having meetings with uh, the head of production, uh, the head of all the project managers, our project manager's boss, uh, who was very helpful. We felt it was very, very important for us to have our finger on the pulse of what's going on at the shipyard. Now we are going to a meeting with the new head of production. To discuss some of the outstanding items uh, we have and to get a better idea of our supply chain issues and concerns that are coming up with our build and seeing if there's any pain points with Sunreef that we can work together on. Sunreef Yachts recently welcomed Malta as their new head of production. Malta played a pivotal role in ensuring we could minimize delays during the early months of the war. Malta's dedication and expertise proved instrumental in mitigating the impact of these unforeseen circumstances. So you guys put together 125 items. I haven't looked at it. I want to go through, with it, through that. I want to send it to Malta in advance. So it's, it's like a packing list kind of thing. This is something I think we want to bring up with, uh, with Malta. Yeah. So, Stelly, I saw you sent um, this list. Yes. We produced a list with the remaining items needed for the build, and with Sunreef's help, we developed sourcing strategies and close collaboration with alternative suppliers. Uh, it needed to be evaluated. They needed to determine where are they getting the parts, where are they getting the raw materials, where are they getting the labor to, uh, to do this. And we went from having um, Zoom and once a month meetings with our project manager to having meetings every week. We were trying to get uh, a head start on our on our project and not have anything hold it up. Now a number of things held held us up in production but we worked with Sunreef and we knew on a weekly basis where we were. We were looking at production schedules, at uh, materials that were coming into the shipyard. We we're having our quality control team uh, verifying that the materials were uh, were there, identifying serial numbers on uh, large components, generators, in uh, motors, uh, chargers, batteries, water makers, passerails, all these things. Um, we wanted to know where they were in the supply chain. And for example, we, we agreed to use a different manufacturer for our water maker because we're aware that Sea Recovery is having difficulty uh, with their supply chain providing water makers. We had very realistic expectations going forward from there as to what these delays were going to be. Some of them were minor. Some of them we uh, worked through with, with Sunreef and were able to figure out either using a different vendor, um, maybe building the boat out of sequence, uh, building modules that were in a critical path uh, earlier. And Sunreef was great. They said, look, we're gonna continue on with what we know. If we need to modify something a little bit later, it's gonna be easier to do that. It's not gonna hold us up. So we moved forward with the, uh, with the build. And we had a couple things that we'd started to build in the, in the boat that needed a little bit of re-engineering once we finally got uh, technical drawings to the uh, construction uh, managers. Sunreef was just fantastic at really being on top of their vendors and, and knowing what we could and should expect. So well, we wish you the very best luck in accomplishing this, and I'm sure Kev Kilk will do it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really keen on, on hands on, so um, I might be looking forward to this. You know, many times I've uh, referred to our client as a, as a pioneer in the industry. He was the one that was willing to say, Look, I know this is going to be hard, I know it hasn't been done before, but I trust we'll be able to do it. So we're going to work together and figure it out. On the next episode of The Future of Yachting Now. And today we're just going to go through the boat with our, uh, with our captain 
and have a look at the progress. Starting to see that the uh, floor panels are getting bonded in. It's, I think, a full package of eco solutions, right? You got the, the solar combined with the batteries, everything being energy efficient, being uh, autonomous, and enjoying the seas in a like in, on a whole new level. It's a normal thing, you know, to have a, a little bit of apprehension, especially when you're doing something, pioneering something new. You can only achieve, you know, great things if you take risks and uh, you've got to try. Yes, that's that's part of the that's part of the journey. That's what makes it exciting.